Dr. Roman Kreuter, thanks so much for coming on to Evolution Soup all the way from your office in the State University of Moldova. You are a lead scientific researcher at the Institute of Zoology, and your main interests are focused upon the evolution of the ancient deer from the late Miocene to the Holocene, including the magnificent Megaloceros or Irish elk that we'll be talking about today. Welcome to the show, Roman. Um, I know you've been working on a book about ancient deer. So uh, how has that been coming along? Yes, now I am putting everything that I collected, I am putting on the paper, uh, mostly everything, uh, the text is ready. And I am focused up upon drawings and illustrations because it's very important for, the, for a zoological work. Before we enter the world of the Megaloceros and its relatives, let's just hear a little bit about your background. Roman, where did you grow up and what interests and fascinations led you to where you are now? Well, my life is uh, generally not usual. I was born in the far east of Soviet Union in uh, Chukotka. My father was military, and then we moved it from far east of Soviet Union to far west of Soviet Union in uh, West Ukraine, where I spent all my childhood. So my childhood is related to culture and traditions of Central Europe. In the town where I, I grew up was a library for children. And there I found a very interesting illustrated book dedicated to fossil animals, which are now extinct. So when I was a student in Moldova, I went to the faculty of biology, just because I liked animals too. And uh, when I found out that here in Moldova, there is a paleontological collection and there is a labor laboratory studying uh, fossil animals, I said that probably I have to go there and to try because uh, this is what I like and this is what I need. One of the most fascinating members of the world's ancient megafauna is the giant deer, also referred to as the Irish elk. Known to paleobiologists as Megaloceros giganteus, this species existed all across Eurasia, from Ireland to Siberia, and boasted some of the most outlandishly large antlers of any animal. Roman, can you give us an overview of the Irish elk? This is a very enigmatic and problematic species, which is very well known by broad public, but is poorly known by scientists. Giant deer or Irish elk was not Irish and was not elk. It was called by that because of uh, huge antlers, which uh, resembled antlers of uh, elks. And the first uh, findings of giant deer, they come from Ireland, which uh, actually served at that time in the past as a cemetery of, the, of giant deer. That's why we have a huge amount of fossil, fossils of giant deer in this area. It was a sort of trap for a population of giant deer where they could not ex escape uh, this struggling uh, population struggling to survive, that little by little uh, got extinct. This is a tragical uh, story of fossil material that we, uh, everybody know very well. Giant deer was one of the first uh, fossil species which was familiar to the broad public because the antlers of giant deer are very impressive. Uh, dimensions are very huge, so really it's attract attention of everybody. It, it was object which was very prestigious to have in the cabinet of uh, curiosities. And uh, this is, was a big fashion in Europe at that time in 1870 century when Europeans started to tra travel over the, over the world 
they brought a lot of exotic things, uh, including animals, plants, and uh, minerals from other continents, but also local European findings, like fossils, uh, represented a, curios- a special curiosity, which made a important uh, took an important place in the collection, private collections. So giant deer, it just represented this kind of curiosity. And uh, we have, just for this reason, we have early, very early reports on uh, fossil giant deer in literature as examples of curiosities that were found um, in Great Britain and Ireland. They were discovered, described in quite great details with illustrations uh, which made according to the style of 17, uh, 18 centuries. But still they are considered today as the first scientific reports of, of giant deer. Of giant deer. So probably this is a, one of the first fossil species which was described in scientific publications. So uh, antlers were extremely huge and palmated, but the body size is also impressive. Eight or at the withers of a giant deer was a lo- around one meter, 80 centimeters, like a quite tall of modern man, and long body length was three meters around. So it's a huge animal. Roman, what kind of environment did the giant elk live in and how did it affect the species evolution? The first giant deer, which appeared in Europe, they didn't look really as a giant deer yet. Here I have a mandible of quite large deer, like this. Unlike giant deer, is not robust, but it's very large and it's quite primitive. It has primitive, primitive dentition. It appeared uh, pr- about one million years ago in Europe. Uh, there were debates what could it be because it appeared suddenly one million years ago when the West European uh, ecosystem crashed. It was the first uh, waves of uh, cold climate. So, uh, modern fauna became destabilized and uh, some species disappeared. And at this moment, we find suddenly a strange deer with very li- long limbs and very large which was found from Western Europe to Southeastern Europe. The problem is that we didn't have antlers and we didn't know that, and without antlers, it's difficult to understand what species, species is it because uh, the main uh, diagnostic uh, features, uh, they are contained by antlers, they are provided by antlers. Just recently, uh, little by little, uh, scientific community uh, start to understand that this is a, uh, apparently is the first representative uh, of a giant deer that uh, dispersed into Europe from Central uh, Eurasia. How did ancient humans interact with Megaloceros? The material evidence on the relationship between humans and associated uh, animals uh, can be found in the uh, Paleolithic sites where we can find the remains of animals hunted by Paleolithic hunters. But curiously, giant deer not uh, very abundant in this archaeological material. The remains of uh, giant deer are very few. It's very strange because uh, this is a large animal which could bring to uh, human group a lot of uh, meat. I'm sure that they ad- admired uh, giant deer because uh, quite often represented in the Paleolithic art, the cave art. The, the best images of giant deer come from, come from Cognac Cave in southwestern France. 
where we can see the images of giant deer that made with a great precision. Even we can uh, see that from uh, those images that uh, external uh, appearance of uh, giant deer is very impressive with the complex pattern of colors and uh, forms on its body. This is what usually we find in uh, herbivores, which uh, inhabit open landscapes. So, Paleolithic artists and hunter, uh, hunters, I think they admired gi- uh, giant deer. We can find the Paleolithic hunters specialized on uh, various uh, species like reindeer, like uh, mammoth. But uh, they never were specialized on giant deer. The problem is that uh, giant deer does, uh, did not bring enough food for the energy which was spent for to hunt this animal. But uh, because uh, if we take, for instance, uh, reindeer, a very popular game animal for Paleolithic uh, hunters, it's, it's easy to hunt, it's easy to transport. And this is an easy, easy source of food. Uh, from another hand, uh, the Paleolithic hunters specialized on uh, mammoths. It's more difficult to hunt a mammoth. We, we need some skills to interact uh, among hunters. But finally, if mammoth is hunted, the entire community is safe from the point of view of alimentation for several months. A question that comes up a lot when discussing the ancient megafauna is the mystery of their disappearance. Roman, why did the giant elk go extinct? The problem is that large animals, they are well adapted to, in, to conditions in the stable ecosystems like, for instance, like African ecosystems, which are considered very old, well-established and highly co-adapted ecosystems, while in northern uh, latitudes, climate changes, they always perturb, repeatedly perturb ecosystems. And the first most vulnerable species are the large giant species. Uh, because uh, they have a longer life cycle, uh, they can bring less babies during a certain period. Uh, so the rate of birth, of birth is uh, also is very uh, long. Uh, they have a slower capacity of uh, uh, to adapt to climate change. For instance, little rodents during certain period they have. 50 generations, the evolution is faster, they adapt to new conditions much faster. Well, during, during this period, uh, in giant uh, mammals, including giant deer, we have only one generation that changed. So we have the, the huge difference. So, and e- any each uh, uh, stabilization, perturbation of ecosystem, it hits strongly the population of large mammals and large animals generally. So humans were not really the case. In this case, they could could be as an addition additional fa- factor which could push a little bit uh, faster a, a population of already dying species to extinction, but generally humans were not the case of, it's my opinion, they're not the case of extinctions of, of megafauna from all the continents uh, outside of Africa. Well, it's been a fascinating discussion, and I'm very grateful that you've been able to take the time to come on to the show today. So what's next for you, Roman? Um, Any new projects coming up? Yes, there are some projects, maybe even many projects. I will hope, I hope that I will manage to do all that uh, I would like to do. 
because I want to continue to study John Deere because recently, during the pandemic period, I uh, I was forced to read the old literature on uh, the old literature on John Deere, and by chance I discovered a specimen which was used for description of uh, species Megalocerus giganteus. And uh, I was lucky to identify this uh, specimen in the literature, and it exists today in the same uh, castle when it was in Ireland when it was seen uh, 300 years ago. So I was lucky to get the financial support from the British Deer Society to study this specimen from Barney Castle in Ireland. And this is my plan for the current year. Another thing that I would like to do is to apply the methods of data science in, uh, in paleontology, basing on my material of fossil deer, including the reconstruction of fragmented material. There are some methods which allow to do it. And this, as we know, uh, the, the main problem of paleontology is the fragmented information which we have to deal with. And uh, I think that uh, using the modern methods of data science is possible to solve this problem. So those are my plans for, for future, for near future. Roman Korta, thank you very much indeed. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mark, for inviting me, and thank you very much for your effort for popularization of science and paleontology, because uh, I believe you are doing very great uh, work, and very important for us all. So thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>